Burundi gained independence from Belgian colonial rule on July 1, 1962 following a period of agitation and political negotiations. Here's an overview of how Burundi achieved independence, its fight for freedom, and its early leaders struggle for independence. Colonial rule, Burundi, along with neighboring Rwanda, was colonized by Germany in the late 19th century and later came under Belgian control after World War I. During this period, the colonial powers imposed their authority over the region, exploiting its resources and implementing policies that favored the colonizers' nationalist movements. Throughout the colonial era, Burundi experienced various forms of resistance against foreign rule. Nationalist movements emerged advocating for independence and self-governance. However, these movements faced repression from colonial authorities, independence, Burundi gained independence from Belgium on July 1, 1962, following a period of political negotiations and agitation for self-rule. The country's independence marked the beginning of a new era, characterized by the challenges of nation-building and establishing stable governance structures, fight for independence, one, colonial oppression, like many African nations, Burundi experienced colonization by European powers, particularly Belgium. Under colonial rule, the local population faced oppression, exploitation, and discrimination. 2. Emergence of nationalism, despite the challenges, Burundian nationalism began to emerge in the mid-20th century. Intellectuals, political leaders, and grassroots movements started advocating for self-rule and an end to colonial domination. 3. Political organizations, political parties, and nationalist movements were formed to push for independence. Notable among these were the Union for National Progress, APRONA, and the Democratic Union for the People of Burundi, UDPB, which played significant roles in the struggle for independence. 4. Resistance and mobilization, a Burundians organized protests, strikes, and other forms of resistance against colonial rule. The demand for independence gained momentum as more people joined the struggle. Freedom fighters, one, Prince Louis Wagaso, often referred to as the father of Burundian independence, Louis Wagaso was a prominent nationalist leader and the son of the King of Burundi. He founded APRONA and played a key role in mobilizing support for independence. Tragically, he was assassinated in October 1961, just months before Burundi gained independence. Too. Leadership figures, other notable figures in the fight for Burundian independence include Silverante Bantanganya, Pianjen Dandamui, and others who contributed to the nationalist cause through political activism and resistance. First president following independence, Burundi's first president was Michel Maikombaro. He came to power in 1966 after leading a military coup against Ki Mombatsa IV. Maikombaro's regime was characterized by authoritarian rule and political repression. While he initially led efforts to modernize the country, his leadership also oversaw periods of ethnic violence and human rights abuses. Overall, the journey to independence for Burundi was marked by sacrifice, resistance, and determination. The legacy of its freedom fighters and early leaders continues to shape the nation's history and identity. The assassination of a Burundian president is a tragic event in the country's history, reflecting the complexities of political tensions and ethnic divisions that have plagued the nation for decades. While Burundi has experienced multiple assassinations and attempted assassinations of its leaders throughout its history, one of the most notable instances occurred in 1993 with the assassination of President Melchior Ndade. Background Melchior Ndade, a Hutu, was elected as the first democratically elected president of Burundi in June 1993. His election marked a significant milestone in the country's history as it was the first time power had shifted from the Tutsi minority to the Hutu majority since independence in 1962. However, Ndade's presidency was short-lived, and his assassination plunged Burundi into a period of political turmoil and ethnic violence assassination. 
On October 21, 1993, just three months after assuming office, President Malkion Nede was assassinated in a coup attempt led by hardline Tutsi military officers. The coup plotters stormed the presidential palace in Bujambura, the capital city, and executed Nede along with several of his advisors. The assassination sparked widespread violence and chaos across Burundi, with retaliatory attacks between Hutu and Tutsi ethnic groups erupting in various parts of the country. The political instability and ethnic tensions that followed Nade's assassination plunged Burundi into a brutal civil war that lasted for over a decade, claiming hundreds of thousands of lives and displacing millions of people. Aftermath, the assassination of President Melchior Ndede and the subsequent violence deepened the ethnic divide in Burundi and shattered hopes for a peaceful transition to democracy. The country's political landscape became increasingly fragmented along ethnic lines, with successive governments struggling to address the underlying grievances and heal the wounds of the past. In the years following the day's assassination, Burundi experienced a series of coups, assassinations, then failed attempts at peace agreements, further exacerbating the cycle of violence and instability. It was not until the signing of the Arusha Peace and Reconciliation Agreement in 2000 that Burundi began to make significant strides towards ending the civil war and restoring stability. Legacy, the assassination of President Melchior in the day remains a painful chapter in Burundi's history, serving as a stark reminder of the deep-rooted ethnic tensions and political challenges that continue to shape the country's trajectory. It underscores the urgent need for inclusive governance, reconciliation, and efforts to address the underlying causes of conflict in order to build a more peaceful and prosperous future for all Burundians. In the aftermath of Nadi's assassination, Vice President Cyprin Tariamara, also a Hutu, assumed the presidency. However, Ntariamara's presidency was similarly brief and marred by tragedy. On April 6, 1994, while returning from a summit in Tanzania, the plane carrying President Dariamara and Rwandan President Juvenal Habarimena was shot down over Kigali, Rwanda. The circumstances surrounding the plane crash remain contentious, with various theories and accusations implicating different parties. The assassination of Ndariyamara further destabilized Burundi and contributed to the escalation of violence in the region. The assassinations of Nade and Ndariyamara had profound and enduring consequences for Burundi. They deepened ethnic divisions, exacerbated political instability, and fueled cycles of violence and retribution. The legacy of these assassinations continues to shape Burundi's political landscape and underscores the challenges of achieving lasting peace and reconciliation in the country. Efforts to address the underlying grievances and heal the wounds of the past remain ongoing. Transitional justice mechanisms, national reconciliation initiatives, and democratic reforms have been pursued in an effort to promote stability and foster inclusive governance. However, the road to peace in Burundi remains fraught with challenges, and the scars of the past continue to linger, serving as a sobering reminder of the human cost of political violence and ethnic strife.